Hello everyone and welcome to History Hangout here at the Shippensburg Historical Society. And I figured today I'll go ahead and talk about sports in colonial America just because of the fact that right now we're through the getting through the NFL playoffs. You have Major League Hockey coming back in um, to start their season this week. And then of course you have the NBA and then of course uh, baseball which is going to follow a suit here in uh, spring. So going through this, when I did the uh, episode with the children's games, I kept finding all these really great references to uh, sports in particular, or what they would call leisure activities during the, uh, the 1700s. So taking a game of cricket here, a lot of like ball and stick games were very popular in colonial America. And a lot of them originated from the different countries in Europe. So the more migration that took place from Europe to America, we start seeing all these kinds of leisure activities really taking off. And of course, it also depends on your social status within the colonies and also the location um, where you're at because in the colonies, remember in the earlier 1700s or late 1600s, you had the Puritans in New England, um, which was very strict living. Here in Pennsylvania, it was more like a mixing bowl of religions as well as ethical groups. So it's a little more relaxed, but then when you get down to the South, um, it is very relaxed. So here we have a couple examples I'm gonna show you of the game cricket. And of course you have basically somebody who's rolling the ball, they're gonna to try to get it through the wicket. And of course you have the batter here who is basically is going to try to prevent that. And you have basically two teams and they play on uh, basically, I think they're like 11. So it's a pretty interesting game. Nice thing that's, uh, that's kind of unique is because during this time period, it would be kind of inappropriate for a male to be basically playing or outdoors without doing strenuous activities without a waistcoat. So I guess with the leisure activities here, those players are without the waistcoats and you can tell those who are not really playing, they have them on. So that's just a, an interesting aspect of it, but just really great examples of cricket and here you have a young adult or a young boy in this case and you can see the tools of the trade right there and again it's a very fast paced game and really you're trying to get 10 outs and some of these games here could be played for days on end another great example here you got the pitcher who is basically rolling the ball toward the batter and then you got the bystanders that are up there just kind of taking in the game and watching everybody have fun. Here's a nice drawing of what the actual field would look like. So you have one team and then you have your second team here. And of course cricket really um, could be played by men, could be played by children but it was also an activity for ladies of the period to also play as well. The origins of lacrosse. We have lacrosse in schools and colleges today. Well, lacrosse kind of goes back into the woodland Native Americans that were here on the eastern uh, coast of the United States, as well as some of the tribes in the Midwest. And as more and more Europeans were arriving in this country, they started really to put their trademark on this traditional Native American game. And here you can see the tools of the trade here. And this drawing here, um, or piece of artwork here, is very beautifully drawn because it shows you everything that Native Americans would use to play lacrosse from their tools here, but you also see the bowl that is right there. But then you have a game called Kolf or Coven, and basically you have two players on each side, and it's kind of like a form of golf, but not necessarily trying to get it in a hole. Basically, you're trying to go ahead and hit the ball, and then your opponents are going to go ahead and try to equal that when they come up. But here, it's a beautiful game that's played on the ice. So in some terms, ice hockey, this might be one of the deep roots for 
uh, ice hockey and you can see the skates that are on everybody. Here you have your stick and then right here is the ball and here is his partner here and then if you look down further you know you got this guy here who's an onlooker so it's really interesting to see how these games were played now this drawing here actually showcases more or less the 1600s and of course this particular style game pretty much came from the netherlands and here's another view of the game being played here you have your two partners the stick and then you have the ball right here and then if you look down you got this gentleman here who's waiting to receive um, the ball from this guy here and as you can see the stance is pretty much the same way as what you would see in golf and then here's another um, drawing or a piece of art that kind of showcases that too you don't see much of it up here but you do see it right here So we have the ice version of what they call golf, but now we have golf. And of course, golf is very exciting. Um, the actual first terminology was written in the mid 1400s. The actual rules were not written until about the mid 1700s. And it's a game that pretty much came out of England. And here you can see the golf club as well as the golf ball right there. So when you think about a lot of these professional sports or sometimes you call sports skills like golf it's amazing how their roots are deeply rooted through centuries and centuries here we have a game of stool ball and basically is you have a person here that's trying to hit the stool while you have this guy here blocking it skittles um, nine pins, which again comes from the Netherlands or the Dutch, but it also is an English uh, uh, skill. And basically it's the forefront of modern day bowling. Here we have nine pins, which are set up and the goal of course is to try to knock as many of them down as possible. And of course, looking at the clothing on these individuals, I'm gonna say that this is pretty much also in the 1600s. Here is the 1700s, and you can see where the gentleman is basically is getting ready to roll back and roll the ball. And you can see how he's got his lanes marked off here as well. But then you have croquet, and I remember growing up, my family had a croquet set, and they would have all those little wickets set up in the yard, and, and the object was to try to get the ball through those um, those wickets. Baseball, I know the, the American version of baseball wasn't invented until the 1800s, but baseball itself, at least the term spelled this way, goes back to about the 1700s out of England. And here you can see the bases And then here in this portrait here, you can see girls playing a form of baseball as well. And this almost looks like it's like a t-ball style. I don't know if I would want to call it that, but maybe she's getting ready to pitch underhanded. Billards was another popular form of leisure activities. Uh, the reason I chose to put this in here is because of the fact that you do have official leagues today and, and um, it's just a fun popular uh, game to play and there's some discrepancy as to when this actually came to America. Some feel that it may have came through St. Augustine when the Spaniards arrived here in North America in the mid 1500s but then again the game itself was also played by Englishmen and cabinet makers would basically make out the tables. So billiards was a very popular game itself. Uh, George Washington, as a matter of fact, um, he wrote that he won his first game in 1748. Uh, Battledore or uh, Shuttlecock. 
basically badminton. And you can see the rackets, um, which were known as battle doors. And the scuttle or the shuttlecock was the birdie. And here you have um, a very interesting portrait kind of showing you the teams and everybody being part of the game. Um, here's one of the shuttlecocks and here's another one here. Here we have a great close-up of the shuttlecock as well as the racket. I do like the fact that you have the toy gun here and also some type of stick that would have been used for some kind of uh, a game. Here's another great close-up. Um, of course, you got the racket here as well as the birdie there. Here you have a, just a friendly game being played. Notice how close these folks are playing with it. So I guess they kind of start close and then they start backing up as the birdie keeps getting hit further and further. But if you notice, there's definitely no nets, no nothing. What I like about this game is that it's kind of like the front runner of the modern game of tennis. With that being said, I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this edition. From uh, the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be looking into different aspects of time periods to see what kind of material cultures from things that people may have used on a daily basis to maybe some of the clothing or the way they dressed with the different classes. But um, I just want to go ahead and just say thank you for tuning in. And definitely, I'm looking forward to doing more of the history hangouts for you. Till next time, I just want to say, hey, thank you very much. And we'll see you again.